From Texarkana, Arkansas, this is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good morning. I'm Joey McWilliams. Glad to be with you on this Saturday morning. Well, there is football to be seen today, and we have a big matchup for you. My broadcast partner, Michael Westbrook, is going to join me shortly, and we will be presenting to you from the GAC Sports Network the Live United Bowl. This year it is a matchup between GAC Southern Arkansas and MIAA team Missouri Western. Let's talk about a few things really quickly to get into the day. Of course the Division II National Festival is taking place in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Lots of activity going on there and we have a number of teams from our MidwestSports.net regional footprint that are competing in these national finals. We'll give you some of the results next week on Midwest Sports Saturday. And let's go ahead and talk really quickly about what is happening playoff wise. We are down to the final four in the NAIA in football and in volleyball. And in both of those sports, we have three of the final four teams from our MidwestSports.net regional footprint. In football, because it's still a football day, it's December the 1st and, and it's Football weather outside. Feels like it's just nice, it's cool, it's pleasant. After all the rains in the area, it's going to be a pleasant day for folks to watch football outside today. The final four in the NAI look like this. It's going to be Morningside, the number one team in the country, and our number one team on the MidwestSports.net regional rankings throughout the season. Morningside taking on St. Francis today. That is a noon kickoff. And in the other national semifinal team, or final game, a couple of teams that we have covered all year long. Benedictine taking on Kansas Wesleyan. So that is a look at the final four there in the NAI. Really quickly, volleyball. Uh, the final four again, three of the teams from our regional footprint. Viterbo taking on Columbia today at 11 a.m. These matchups are going on semifinals as has the entire national tournament. Semifinals taking place in Sioux City, Iowa. It's Viterbo taking on Columbia, the Cougars trying to move on along and take down the upset-minded Viterbo V-Hawks. Uh, Viterbo, by the way, knocked off Grandview, gave the Vikings their first loss of the season. Grandview had been our number one team in the MidwestSports.net regional rankings throughout the season. Grandview falls to Viterbo in the quarterfinal. And so it is Viterbo and Columbia in one semifinal match today at 11 o'clock. It is Park and Midland in the other semifinal match. Park the number one team in the country and they continue to roll. By the way, Midland in the quarterfinal upsetting the defending national champion Lindsey Wilson. So those two semifinals going on the championship will be tonight as well from Sioux City and that will be the semifinal winners again. Viterbo and Columbia, Park and Midland. And now I get to bring in my broadcast partner and my friend Michael Westbrook here on Midwest Sports Saturday this Saturday morning. Michael, Man, it's great to get to work with you again. Hey, thank you very much. I heard you rattle off all of those teams. I only know about three teams pretty much today. <laughs> okay, the Midwest, <laughs> Missouri Western Griffins, Southern Arkansas Mule Riders, and the Washtenaw Baptist Tigers. I'll be keeping up with those three today. Well, good. I want to give you an opportunity to talk about then those three teams too because uh, you know more about them right now than I do, so that I'm just teasing. Uh, but you, you <laughs> no, do. You I mean, you are, you, you are always ready. Michael is going to be doing play-by-play -play today for the Live United Bowl in its sixth season now here in Texarkana, Arkansas on the campus of Arkansas High. Uh, great facilities and by the way that's where we are today. We are at Razorback TV. Michael is not only my broadcast partner for a number of years and we've worked together in so many sports but you also uh, are the production and technology director. What exactly is your title here? And by the way I'm still young enough I like to keep counting those years. It's <laughs> 10 years you and I have worked together but yeah, this is the home of Razorback TV on the campus of Arkansas High School, and I've got two students in here with us today, Hank Harrelson and Cameron Lumpkin. Very proud of those two and a lot of others as well. But here we produce Razorback TV News. We are now about to start producing a brand new show called On Our Campus, where we cover things across our campus that's a little more in-depth than what Razorback TV News would have. And um, we do everything from all sorts of audio video projects from a 30 second commercial for another part of campus that wants something promoted to, like I said, more in-depth interview style format like you might see on 60 Minutes. And um, we, we teach a lot of communication skills and leadership skills and work ethic here. And those are the three I like to focus on. And, and these two in the room here today with us and a few others have really been working hard these last few weeks uh, down the stretch to Christmas break. Well, it's a great setup here. And, and for Midwest Sports, 
Midwest Sports Saturday to get to originate from Razorback TV in the studio in here today. We're very, very thankful. Joey, we put new LED lights in just for you <laughs> today. Now, we got those installed a couple of days ago, and there's there's been a lot of major progress here over the last couple of years. And while I have the platform, I guess, I'd just like to say thank you to our administration for what they have done and the investment they have made um, here at Arkansas High for our program. Well, it is, it is very nice. I will say, though, that anytime you're bringing in new lights, to, to deal with me. There needs to be uh, makeup in the yeah, we budget as well. That. We have to powder down because we don't want to get that kind of a glare. We're, we're here on Midwest <laughs> Sports Saturday and let's talk a little sports now because we have a big bowl game going on today. Division two football bowl games. We've had a chance again to be a part of this Live United Bowl since its inception now in its sixth season now. We've seen some good football. We've seen some bad weather. Uh, and I believe we're going to get the good football today. It's looking nice here in Texarkana. And I think we're going to have the good weather instead of that bad weather that we've seen the last few years. So that's certainly a good thing. It's really interesting to think that you and I have been coming here since 2013 know. when Harding and Commerce played each other in the Live United Bowl. But this year, Southern Arkansas is in the game for the second time. They become the first repeat team as they were here two years ago. And you know, there's a lot of uh, opportunity for SAU to close the door on the past of what has been a bad November for them and, and a bad Live United Bowl experience a couple of years ago because of that disastrous weather. Mm -hmm. They lost by seven to Kingsville a couple of seasons ago. So uh, Barrett Renner, a senior quarterback, Coach Keppel in his 10th year, he's coming back to his uh, old stomping grounds as well where he won two state championships here. And they have an, an exceptional defense as well. There's some guys on that defense who have won numerous postseason awards. And so Mule Riders have a really good chance today. Now the flip side of this, Joey, is that the Missouri Western team is six and five, losing their last game of the year and thinking that, okay, our season's probably over. All of a sudden they have a whole lot of new life and they have a second year head coach who's fired up about the opportunity to play one more game. Uh, they, and, and to get to be in this position is and extend that season just a little bit longer. That's something that not all coaches have the opportunity, especially in Division Two. When you look at the Division One landscape, and it seems like that half the teams in the country are playing in a bowl game in some way, and that's really not that far off the mark. You, you reach your yeah. your threshold of being what they call bowl eligible at six wins, and if you have those six wins, there's a very good chance you'll be playing in the postseason in some way. And what this means with NCAA regulations, the opportunity to have another one, two plus weeks with those athletes where they, they wouldn't have had the opportunity to be working out before, you get that opportunity to work with those kids. Coach Keppel actually mentions that a little bit later on, just some more time with them, and that is, that is a big deal. Now the matchup here in the Live United Bowl always features one team from the Great American Conference. That team is the first team of the next teams. Uh, as the teams make the playoffs, they're, they're not going to be playing in a bowl game. They'll be playing in the playoffs. This year it was Washita and Harding. Washita's season continues. We'll talk about the Tigers later on. It's that next team down and the GAC team will be facing an opponent from either the Lone Star Conference or the MIAA. This year it's the MIAA and is Missouri Western, but it's new life. And that's really what that means for those Griffins. Right. And for the MIAA, this is the fourth year they've been here. By the way, my big spotting board here, got all the stats on here. I'll flip it for you. <laughs> you know, this Missouri Western team, they have a lot to play for because they have some conference bragging rights too. Mm -hmm. The MIAA is 3-0 and here in the Live United Bowl. And so they don't want to be that first MIAA team that comes in and <laughs> loses. And Joey, if we could, I, I want to mention a couple of key players for Missouri Western because I mentioned so many for SAU. There has been a lot of talk about the offensive line. Now, that's a little strange. We don't start with the quarterback or the wide receiver or the running back or maybe somebody on defense, but the MIAA, when they announce their all-conference honors, they do a first, second, third team, and honorable mention. So a few more players get awards than maybe what is a Got given in the Great American Conference. But on that offensive line, all five starters received some sort of MIAA honors. That, and they're all juniors, you know, mainly. So that's where it starts with this team, and that allows Don Marino, the quarterback, to be able to run. And they've got three running backs with over 600 yards this year, or three players, two running backs and a quarterback with over 600 yards this year on the ground. 
That could then open up some plays for Keelan Mack, the wide receiver, but it all starts with that offensive line. It does, and that makes that makes such a difference for a quarterback to be able to do what he wants to do when you have that kind of protection. So that is the matchup today. It's going to be Missouri Western and Southern Arkansas. Now, Michael and I have, have broadcast in the GAC for a number of years, had an opportunity to see Southern Arkansas with frequency. As a matter of fact, uh, you were on campus at Southern Arkansas itself for quite a while working with the athletic department and, and with the administration as a whole. So I know you've, you're familiar with the team and with Coach Keppel and, and how he has brought this program along. We had an opportunity to hear from Coach Keppel uh, regarding the close of the season and getting into the bowl game as Sports Information Director Jacob Pumphrey visited with Coach Keppel and he, his take on what it means to be moving on to the Live United Bowl. Well, obviously the season didn't end the way we wanted it, but you know, anytime you get invited to a uh, postseason play, uh, you've done something right. You've had a good year. I mean, I, I was sitting in our staff room with my staff uh, last week, and go, you know, you, to sit around here and mope and, and cry and be on a downer about how our season ended and we won eight games. What's, what's wrong with us? <laughs> you know, so uh, it finally has sunk in, uh, sunk in that uh, you know we had a heck of a year. Uh, you no, know, it didn't go our way, but that, that's, that's sports. I mean, you're not going to win them all. And uh, we got to week 10 again playing for a conference championship. That's two weeks, uh, two years in a row now. we got to figure out how to beat that team. And uh, uh, that's uh, what we'll be working for moving forward. Uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, the loss to Washita, who has a very good football team, obviously, in the playoffs right now in the final eight, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of snowballed on us to the, the next week, and, and that hurt. Um couldn't really get over it mentally uh, with our football team. And uh, even though we thought we were in control for a long time, it didn't, didn't end up our way. But still, to get it's an honor to get asked. Uh, obviously, we were the next team up uh, that didn't make the national playoffs in the, in the uh, Great American. Uh, there's a lot of teams in our league wish they won eight, eight games. Uh, so, uh, you know, t taking the high road, uh, we've had a heck of a year. Had a heck of a year. Uh, and... Uh, you know, it's hard to put it all together and it all come around for a championship anywhere. I don't care where you're at. Uh, I, I know what it tells me. Our league has really gotten a lot better. Uh, I mean, you look at the course of, of the great Americans since they put it together. Henderson's had a run of winning games like they've never won in the history of their school. Now they've kind of stepped back, and, and Washita has had two years of undefeated seasons, only two in the history of their school, and, and Harding throws an undefeated one in there. The good news, we've beaten Harding two years in a row. we got to get we got to figure out how, how to get the Tigers back uh, where we can beat them again, and which we've had good battles with them over the years. Uh, but it's an honor going to the uh, Live United Bowl. It, it gives you three more weeks with your kids. Um, whereas uh, if we didn't get the invite, didn't get to play in the postseason play after the UAM game, we would have had to put up all our equipment. We wouldn't have been able to take our guys to the weight room. They would have had two months of, of doing nothing, being lazy college kids, you know, and, and uh, that's not good for any program. So I'm excited about that opportunity. It's been good. We, uh, The first week after our last game, we had three days of we scrimmage with our young guys. Uh, we got into the um, – Thanksgiving week, we had a scrimmage that week also. Uh, so that's all been positive. I think our team has kind of gotten over the the downer of losing uh, uh, at the end of the year there. And uh, we, we've kind of got a, a real positive frame of mind going into this, this week right now, getting prepared and uh, playing Saturday. Uh, you know, I, I feel good about where our team is right now. I, I know I feel good about our program, where our program's at. Uh, you know, it, it's just a piece to the puzzle here and there. And can you keep everybody healthy through the course of it? That's the, that's the thing we all battle as coaches. But, uh, you know, when you're relevant, uh, people are talking to you at this time of the year. Right now people are talking to us and uh, people wanting to come play football here. That's all positive for us moving forward. Thanks to Jacob Humphrey and the Sports Information Department at Southern Arkansas University. And also thanks to Coach Keppel for giving us a little bit of time here on Midwest Sports Saturday. For the entirety of that interview, please go ahead and go watch that. It's Midwest Sports Saturday's YouTube channel, and that's probably where you're watching Midwest Sports Saturday today on our YouTube channel, Midwest Sports Net. So the entirety of that interview can be found there. Well, Michael, as we look also at the Live United Bowl, one of the things about this matchup itself is, it, you know, they're, they're contrasting styles, but there are two big name quarterbacks for these two teams. I know you talked about the offensive line, but let's talk about those quarterbacks one more time for uh, Missouri Western, Dom Marino, and competing in a conference in the MIAA where 
Uh, there is just so much strength in football year in and year out. Perennial favorites to make it into the playoffs and make it a deep playoff run. Uh, Marino's had quite a run at, at Missouri Western. Well, he certainly has. 644 yards on the ground this year. He's thrown for eight touchdowns. And this is a team that does run the ball more than they pass, which is a little bit rare this day in age in college football. But he has been able to lead the team through the air and on the ground. And, you know, this is a team that the second game of the year, they knocked off Fort Hayes State. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, number five team in the nation at the time. And so Fort Hayes State ended up becoming a Division II playoff team by the end of the year. It was a, it was a tough stretch the beginning of the year for this Missouri Western team. So I think, uh, I think you know, head coach Matt Williamson has to be saying six and five, my second year. The senior quarterback helped lead the way through an extremely tough schedule. Well, and Fort Hayes State is the conference champion again this year, so that's back-to-back. -back. And with Missouri Western handing the Tigers their first loss since 2016, that was a really big deal at the time. Also uh, took out Central Missouri two yeah. weeks later, and so that was really getting the, the Griffins going in their season. Honestly, I think the Griffins caused Division II postseason had to be <laughs> yes. honest with you. There are some MIAA schools who have become accustomed to being in the playoffs, having winning records, looking at other teams and saying this is going to be a win. And I think Missouri Western really caused some problems for some of those teams this year. Well, a team that had a little bit of playoff havoc of its own was Southern Arkansas and, and havoc to the point that not in the Division II playoffs. Happy to be in the bowl game, but there was a real opportunity uh, as Coach Keppel mentioned, down late in the season to be able to take that next step and led by Barrett Renner and he's the all-everything quarterback. He just continues to, to light it up. There doesn't seem to be anything he can't do in throwing the ball. Oh, you're right. And, you know, uh, it's, it went sour for him down the stretch. Got to flip the board again. Sorry, yeah. you know. It's all right. It, 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 it's tailspin on him. As, as Coach Keppel said, it snowballed at the end of the year. They go into the Washtaw game. If you win that game, second to last game of the year, you're tied for the regular season conference championship with one game to go. You might be able to win that outright. And that was the D2 National Showcase game of the week. I mean, the stakes were extremely high in Arkadelphia that day. And that's say you didn't live up to it, to be honest with you. Uh, Washtaw's defense really played well. And as he said, that snowballed into the next week. But I don't want to take anything away from Monticello. That's a team no. that's in a bowl game as well. Exactly. And they won five of their last six games, including that win over SAU in a rivalry game, Battle of the Timberlands. And so I know Coach Keppel and his staff at the time were disappointed in that. But I think Monticello is another one of those teams that we want to look at the Great American Conference. They caused some real havoc for the GAC this yes. year. And so, I mean, Washtaw was there a couple of years ago, and they went and lost in Monticello. Teams lose in Monticello. Weird things happen there. <laughs> And there so are some I, places yeah. that that just happens. <laughs> there, there are some cities, some towns, and some arenas or stadiums in, in which weird things just happen. Yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't necessarily um, – I, I know it is a disappointment for SAU to not be in the Division II playoffs, but as Coach Keppel said, I think this needs to be reiterated. When you're disappointed about eight wins, that's a good thing. Yes. That, 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 that definitely is that. Well, you talk about uh, then – Bowl games. There are some other bowl matchups going on today. If you can take us down the list, Division Two. Gotta flip the board with, again, that's, Hey, that's all right, man. We're <laughs> we're active here. We're active right. on Midwest Sports Saturday. Um, different bowl games. You don't think about it as often because they don't have all those names like Sugar Bowl and Orange Bowl that you may be as familiar with. A few different names, but uh, but it's it's a postseason tradition that is starting to grow in Division Two. Yeah, 16 teams still playing as of today, and eight of those are in the Division Two playoffs. The other eight are in the bowl games. Of course, we've uh, dissected enough here today, SAU and Missouri Western in the Live United Bowl. The second annual Corsicana Bowl has Arkansas Monticello against uh, Emporia State. And then the 53rd annual Mineral Water, Mineral Water Bowl, I can't say that one. Do you think we'll be here in 53 years oh, for the United Bowl? We'll see. That has Minnesota I'm not going to lose any more hair. <laughs> it was just, I mean, that's all right. It's going to be the same I look, I think. Yeah. Okay. Missouri, uh, uh, Minnesota State Moorhead and uh, Missouri S&T in that one. And then you also have the Tips Champs Heart of Texas Bowl, which is Angelo State and Central Oklahoma. And, uh, and SAU has actually been in the Champs mm -hmm. Heart of Texas Bowl before as well. And so has Arkansas Tech and some other schools from the GAC along the way. So it's really exciting to know that there are only four Division II bowl games in the nation, most of them centered in this Midwest right. area. Or can I say all of them? 
in yes, the Midwest I mean, area. it, is, it yeah. really is in our in our Midwest footprint. That's where you're going to find these bowl games in Division Two, and it and it's not like that Division Two is is so central of the country or Midwest area centric because there are good Division Two programs on both coasts, and so uh, you know that that you get that opportunity to play these games and get a little bit of a postseason there. It really is a big deal. So four bowl games today, along with the four quarterfinal matchups. I'm looking forward to hours at the Live United Bowl starting at noon today, Joey. All right, so we're going to wrap things up here from Texarkana. And just to close things down, I uh, definitely want to say thanks to Cameron and to Hank for being a part of the broadcast here, Midwest Sports Saturday, from the Razorback TV studios here. Again, fantastic studios, and we're very thankful to get to be here. Don't forget, noon kickoff today between Southern Arkansas and Missouri Western. I'm going to definitely promote that because that's the bowl that, that, that we're doing, but also uh, other Division II football action taking place. We'll, we'll know the national champion in volleyball and the NAI by the end of today, so be watching that. We'll try to get something out on MidwestSports.net and on our uh, YouTube channel as well, and then we'll be down to two in NAI football when all is said and done. We'll find out who those two are. Again, it is Morningside taking on St. Francis today and Benedictine taking on Kansas Wesleyan. So I get to sign off for you. Often you sign off That's for me. Right. I'm going to go ahead and sign off for you today. Thanks for watching Midwest Sports Saturday. I have a lot more information next week and be somewhere else. So uh, keep up with that as well. For Michael Westbrook, I'm Joey McWilliams. God bless you, everybody. Thanks for watching.